Okay friends, in the last class we are talking about this magmatism in the subduction zone and we found this magmatic composition varies from the strength axis and as it is derived from different level with different degree of partial melting, assimilation, water content and due to this composition of this mantle is very from different level. So, this magmatic composition is also varying. And in today's class, we will talk about metamorphism at the subduction zone. So, now how the metamorphism taking place at the subduction zone and what is their product that we will talk here. Now, you see there is two diagrams. One is here the oceanic lithosphere is going down and it is serpentinized. And another figure here, these are showing some of this temperature contours. And you see this trench axis and through this trench axis, this plate is going down. And this is the mantle wedge. So, this is the upper mantle wedge. And here, this is the area where hydration takes place. And not only this is the area, if you remember when we are talking about this mid ocean grid system, their faults are there and through these faults, the water was circulating and it was uh, just altering this basalt into serpentinite. Apart from that, near to the trends, here this is a zone that is called the uh, bulge. And in the bulge, there are normal faulting and through the normal faults, water is going inside. And finally, this is the zone of hydration. So, now we are putting a hydrated slab into serpentinized slab into the mantle system. And here, this hydrated slab, once it is reaching to this much depth, so due to temperature and pressure, it is dehydrating. So, this dehydration, you see this blue globules, these are the release of water. So, where this water will go? Simply, this is the mantle wedge. And this water is released into this mantle wedge, so that its melting temperature is decreasing. And once the melting temperature is decreasing, it is coming close to this liquidus. So, here this partial melting is taking place and finally, this magma is generated and it is here. So, that means it is a temperature and pressure environment. However, the temperature if you see these contours is moving and going like this. So, that means here this temperature contour is going downward and again releasing upward. So, that means it is a varying temperature and pressure zone. Similarly, in this zone you see there are two plates that is overriding plate and under thrusting plate they are in closely contact with each other. However, once you are going to the asthenosphere, the asthenosphere is not that much rigid so that it will put pressure for thrusting if you remember our earlier class. So, that means once you are coming away from this zone, that means to greater depth, this pressure is gradually reducing. However, you are putting this slab into a high temperature environment. So, that means this slab which is coming near to the surface to this end, it is going through a varying temperature and pressure zone. That is why a series of changes taking place in its mineralogy, in its density, in its temperature, in its pressure. So, now you see the thickness of the slab here is this much and gradually once you are going down, the thickness of the slab is decreasing. And the decrease of the thickness of the slab is nothing due to squeezing. So, once it is squeezing the system, that means we are increasing the density. So, that is why the basalt or the oceanic basalt which is subducting at the convergent margin that is undergoing the changes. What is the changes? First change is the release of water into this upper mantle wedge. So, that we have discussed. The second thing that it is the increase in density of the subducting slab because once water is released and we are going to a high temperature environment. So, that means high temperature and pressure minerals that are formed. So, phase changes taking place. 
so which are result for earthquake generation. So once these two changes are occurring, finally at this stage this slab is more dense and finally a dense slab is subducting underground. These reactions involve specific metamorphic transformation that reflect abnormally low geothermal gradient. So why that is low geothermal gradient? Because you see this is the temperature contour, it is going down and it is coming back, it is going down and that means this temperature 300 degree at surface that 300 degree Celsius is reaching here that means this much depth. So that is why here this is the zone of low geothermal gradient. However, if you see this zone, it is the direct junction of this overriding and the under thrusting plate. So that is why this is the zone of a high pressure environment. So that is why the reaction in specific metamorphic reaction will take place in this zone and it is characterized by low geothermal gradient and it is high pressure associated with the subduction zone environment. This geothermal gradient in a normal uh, crustal level it is 25 degree Celsius per kilometer. However, as here you are reaching it is a high pressure environment and you see the geothermal gradient is much much less than the normal. So, this is represented a low geothermal gradient and high pressure environment. Now, prior to the subduction zone, this oceanic slab it has undergone a series of metamorphic changes and the mineral characteristic to that has been produced there. If you remember our earlier class when we were talking about this uh, divergent margin system, the water or this hydrothermal fluid that are released at the east pacific rise and the mid atlantic ridge, they are equilibrated to green cyst phases of metamorphism. That means it says before subduction, this plate which is generated from the mid oceanic ridge due to faulting due to water reaction, this is water percolation, this basaltic system it is metamorphosed up to green cyst phases of metamorphism. That means zeolite, peanite, pompelite, and green cyst phases of metamorphism. That means up to here we have metamorphosed the slab, then we are putting it to inside into the mantle system. So, in zeolite phases, mostly if you see we have low grade metamorphism in zeolite phases and zeolite phases mostly often experienced in pelitic sediments, rock rich in aluminum, silica and potassium sodium and generally low in iron content, magnesium and calcium. So, if you see these zeolites, mostly the product is the clay minerals and its high temperature polymorph is kaolinite and vermiculite. And sometimes in basalt, in vesicular basalt, particularly the void spaces they are filled with zeolite. You see these are the zeolite. If you go to Deccan basalt, you will find beautiful created zeolites within that uh, void spaces. Any Deccan mines, if you go to basalt mines, you will find the zeolites there. Then come to prehenite pompelite phases. It is the metamorphic phases typically of subsea floor alteration of the oceanic crust and the mid oceanic ridge. And it is the metamorphic grade transitional between this zeolite phases and green cyst phases and the temperature varies from 250 to 350 degrees Celsius and approximately the pressure ranges up to 2 to 7 kilo bar. So, what is its product? The mineral assemblage in this prehenite pompelite phases it chloride, phenzite, albite, then pompelite and epidote. These are the mineral product in this group. Then coming to green cyst phases here. The green cyst phases, the name itself said, it is a green colored rock and it is showing cystose characteristics. That is why it is called green cyst phases. So, the typical minerals include we have chloride, epidote, actinolite, and which imparts the green color into the rock. And this type of alteration of a basalt results from the circulation of hot sea water into the hydrothermal system. The fluid. It is seen here, this hydrothermal fluid with our cold water is going inside and is coming as hot water and during its coming back it is reacting with the surrounding rock and it is converting it to green cyst phases. So, these are minerals are common minerals, they are found here in the basalt. So, if you remember this basalt, it is essentially composed of olivine, 
pyroxene, plagioclase like that. But now due to alteration that is converted to chloride, epidote, actinolite like this minerals. So, here this epidote, actinolite, serpentinite and chloride. You see most of these minerals are green in color and what is the common in these minerals if you notice here that is that means all these minerals they contain water in their crystal structure and these water they are playing very major role in partial melting of this mantle and generation of magma as well as this water is playing major role in metamorphism in the underground. So now as the altered basalt descends into the subduction zone, it passes through a pressure temperature field and it is a blue cyst phases of metamorphism which is characteristics of high pressure like high pressure minerals glaucophen and zadites are formed. So now you see we have already metamorphosed this basaltic system or the basaltic lithosphere which is underground up to green cyst phases. So here up to here we have green cyst phases of metamorphism. Now once this place is descending down it is coming direct contact with the overriding plate. So this is the zone where high pressure sensitive minerals are formed because tremendous pressure is here. This under thrusting is not an easy process. It is this overriding plate it will resist to go down and however this will go down forcefully. So this is a high pressure environment. So that is why with respect to this pressure, pressure sensitive minerals like glaucophen which is a amphibole and zadite which is a pyroxene these minerals are commonly found here at this zone. So here these are the zadite and this is glaucophen and glaucophen it is containing some water however zadite is not containing any water. So anyway in this metamorphic phases field we are moving upward that means to a high pressure environment too. we are going to a high pressure zone. So these are the blue cyst rocks in the field. So here this is the presence of blue glaucophen and other sodic chloride. This is blue cyst the name itself says it is a blue color and it is showing cystose characteristics that is why it is blue color. So here this is a cartoon it is showing this blue cyst phases of metamorphism if you see this blue color this is the blue cyst phases and this green color that is the green cyst phases. So the green cyst phases it is gradually converted to blue cyst phases. Then it is further with increasing temperature and pressure it is converting to eclogite phases. So the blue cyst mineral typically mineral assemblage that is the joycite, garnet, chloride, fenzite, this is cyanide, that is something something like that. So this feldspar and biotite are absent in this phases and blue cyst phases assemblage are formed at low temperature and relatively high pressure zone. This is the blue cyst, it is a low temperature you see this temperature field around 400 or 500 degrees Celsius also and it is a high pressure. So that is why this blue cyst phases is forming here. And most characteristics mineral assemblage in the blue cyst phases of rock includes glaucophen, epidote, fenzite, paragonite and chloride. This assemblage is must. So we have a glaucophen, we have epidote, we have fenzite, then we have paragonite and we have chloride. So these five they are essential minerals. Along with that we have plus minus Mg chloritide, plus minus quartz, plus minus garnet. These may or may not present but these five has to be present in the blue cyst phases. Apart from that the typical characteristics biotite is not present and feldspar is not present because these are not pressure sensitive minerals rather they are temperature sensitive minerals. So that is why at high pressure environment their absence is expected. So now the metabasaltic rocks of a blue cyst phases are typically found in subduction around later exhumed complex. For example if you see here this plate is going down and once it is the overriding plate is here it is further able, not able to go inside so there is a return back. So this is process is called exhumation. So once it upon a time it was in the surface then it goes to subsurface and again it is coming back. 
So once it is coming back, that means it is carrying this imprints of this temperature pressure of that depth where it was living. So that is why this process of exhumation, this is the blue cyst of metamorphic rocks they are found. Otherwise, they are at a high pressure environment, they should remain at the uh, subduction zone system. So, another transition is there. In this transition, there is a mineral which is typically of called lawsonite. So, if the pressure is not reached of that much high, so that the glaucophane and zadite can be formed, in that case lawsonite is formed. So, lawsonite along with glaucophane and other amphibole minerals, they are important host for water. So, now you see this plate which is going down having water and its day is over. Similarly, you have epidote, it is carrying water. We have amphibolus that is carrying water, serpentinite that is carrying water, glaucophane that is carrying water and lawsonite that carrying water. So, now the day is over, they have to go inside, so inside the mental system. So, finally, once they are going inside, so there are number of metamorphic reaction taking place, dehydration taking place because they are carrying water. So, we are putting water inside. So, once we are putting water inside to a high temperature and pressure one environment, water is not stable, it has to release. So, that is why dehydration takes place. So, further increase in temperature, the blue cyst of rocks is transformed to eclogite and this transformation is important in terms of following point. What are these following points? This transformation of eclogite enhances negative buoyancy. Negative buoyancy and positive positive buoyancy means it is pushing upward and negative buoyancy means it is pulling downward. So, once it is transformed to eclogite, eclogite is a heavy mineral. It is a group of mineral which are high density. So, that means we are concentrating the heavies or the heavy minerals at certain segment of this plate. That means the plate is itself bending down due to this overloading. So, that is why it is increasing the negative buoyancy of the descending lithosphere and it contributes the slab pull force acting in the subducting plate. So, that means once we are loading it here, so that means the plate is bending down. So, the slab is pulling itself into the downward side. Now, the eclogite is a dense rock, it is consists of mostly garnet and omphasite that we have already discussed. We have a pyrope garnet, we have albandine garnet and we have omphasite like that and plagioclase is not present in eclogite phases. Again, plagioclase is not appeared here. So, this is the photograph of uh, eclogite rock. Eclogites are high pressure rocks that form over wide range of temperature and occur very different geodynamic setting. If you see here this eclogite field, eclogite field is ranging pressure from here to here. Similarly, it is ranging temperature from here to here. So, this is a wide range of mineral assemblage you will find in the eclogite. But the characteristic feature is that most of these minerals they are in the dense form, high density, high specific gravity minerals are here. So, low temperature eclogites may result from subduction of oceanic lithosphere that is intermediate temperature eclogites may result from thickening caused by nappies stacking the continental crust. Such eclogites may still contain hydrous minerals and mainly zoocyte plus fengite. At high temperature eclogite, hydrous phases are absent and kyanite is often characteristics additional mineral associated with garnet plus omphasite. So, that means as it is ranging from low temperature and pressure to high temperature and pressure. So, there is a chance that probably water may remain at this end because we have amphibolite just here. So, amphibolite that means it is content water. So, there is a chance that some of the low temperature eclogite may contain water. However, once the temperature and pressure is increasing, so that is high temperature eclogites are formed, there no water is there. So, once it is a dried system, here kyanite may appear along with garnet plus omphasite. The exact depth at which eclogite facies reactions occur depends upon the pressure and temperature of the subducting oceanic lithosphere. And in the relatively cool subduction zone, such as the northeast Japan, the transformation may occur at depth greater than 100 kilometer. However, in relatively 
वार्म सबडक्शन जोन सच इज इन द साउथ वेस्ट जापान दिस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन में अकर अराउंड 50 किलोमीटर सो डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द सबडक्शन जोन टेंपरेचर डिपेंडिंग अपॉन दिस टेंपरेचर ऑफ दिस स्लैब व्हिच इज गोइंग डाउन इट इज अ न्यू स्लैब और इट इज अ ओल्ड स्लैब व्हाट इज दिस एज ऑफ द स्लैब व्हाट इज द थिकनेस ऑफ द स्लैब व्हाट इज द रेट ऑफ सबडक्शन ऑफ द स्लैब सो दिस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन वेरीज विथ डेप्थ एंड आल्सो इन टेंपरेचर देन अनदर इट इज कॉल्ड रीजनल मेटामॉर्फिज्म सो दैट मींस वी हैव रीच्ड अप टू द इक्लोगाइड फेसेस दैट मींस वी हैव इंक्रीज्ड द डेंसिटी ऑफ द सबडक्टिंग स्लैब सो ड्यू टू दिस ओन वेट द स्लैब इज पुलिंग इटसेल्फ डाउनवर्ड सो नाउ कमिंग टू दिस साइड दिस इज द रीजनल मेटामॉर्फिज्म रीजनल मेटामॉर्फिज्म इटसेल्फ इट सेज इट इज अफेक्टिंग अ लार्ज एरिया दैट्स व्हाई इट इज कॉल्ड रीजनल मेटामॉर्फिज्म सो नाउ इफ यू सी दिस प्लेट इज गोइंग डाउन and it is dehydrating at this mental system and it is creating this magma and here is the magma chamber the 41 zone where this fractional melting starts this is the magma chamber it is magma is occurring here pockets of magma and it is erupting here at volcanoes so that means now we are getting this magmatic system here that means a high temperature environment in this side so addition to this low temperature high pressure type of metamorphism some convergent margin exhibit a regional metamorphism characterized by high temperature greater than 500 degrees celsius and low to moderate pressure because once we have magmatic intrusion definitely this temperature is increasing and this type of metamorphism commonly associated with high geothermal gradient that are characteristics magmatic arc this side we are encountering low geothermal gradient and this side we are characterizing high geothermal gradient because for example here you see this 600 or 400 degree geotherm it is coming here but once it is coming to the subducting slab it is going to higher depth so that is why itself it is indicating this low geothermal gradient is here and high geothermal gradient is here so index mineral such as andalusite and sylmanite occur in the metamorphosed sedimentary rock because sedimentary rock they contain aluminum so this andalusite kyanite sylmanite their composition is same and aluminum is the essential part for that so occurs in the metamorphic sedimentary rock temperature gradient more than 25 degrees celsius per kilometer up to 56 years kilometer result from this accent of magma so this is the normal geothermal gradient that is 25 degree celsius per kilometer however as the magma is ascending magmatic intrusion is there this temperature may rise up to this and this affect large area of crust convergent margin and thus reflect the large scale thermal and tectonic disturbances associated with the subduction orogeny that is called andean type orogeny andean type orogeny if you, if you remember when there is a oceanic plate is subducting under this continental system that is the south american western side of the south america at the peru chile trench where the nazca plate is subducting we have this andes mountain here so this is andean type of magmatism is there we have volcanoes they are associated with the andes mountain so this andean type of magmatism there which is typical to that and the most common group of rocks associated with the regional metamorphism includes green cyst, amphibolite and granulite facies. So we have green cyst facies, we have amphibolite facies and we have granulite facies. So these are very common in this Andean type of metamorphism. The transition from green cyst to amphibolite and then amphibolite facies it depends upon the initial composition of the crust as well as the ambient pressure temperature of the fluid condition. So, how this transition is occurring because it is a temperature related that means we gradually we are increasing the temperature. So, that is why the transition from green cyst to amphibolite at which depth it will form and what should be the condition that depends upon the initial composition of this crust. Either it is basaltic crust or it is a granitic crust and how much sediment is there, what is the sediment thickness inside. So, that all defining at which temperature and pressure this transformation will take place. And the metamorphosed basalt, this transition may marked by the change from actinolite to hornblende. And amphibolites 
able to accept increasing amount of alumina with high temperature. So, if you see here, we have actinolite which is representing the green cyst phases and we have hornblende which are representing the amphipolite phases. So, with increasing temperature, this more and more alumina can be incorporated within the system. So, that is why this aluminum is here and some aluminum it will be here. So, or it is less amount and with increasing temperature, this system is able to incorporate aluminum in this crystal structure. So, that is why from green cyst phases to amphibolite, amphibolite phases, it is the amount of aluminum is increasing and the temperature greater than 650 amphibolite transform to granulite. So, once we are here, so we are reaching to granulite phases. The granulite phases, the name itself indicates the granules. If you see these minerals, we have very equivalent type of mineral. So, the cross sections if you see, this is equivalent type of minerals are present near equivalent type of mineral. So, that is why it is called granulite. And granulites, they are highly diverse and may be of low, medium or high pressure varieties because you see the granulite phases in the pressure axis that varying from this range to this range. So, it is a high pressure varieties. It is characterized the presence of anhydrous minerals assemblage such as orthopyroxene, clinopyroxene, plagioclase and garnet oxides and possible amphiboles are present at low temperature. So, once we are at low temperature, we have the chance that amphiboles may present because amphiboles are hydrous phases. But once we are going to high temperature, so this amphiboles are absent. But instead, we have pyroxenes, then plagioclase, then garnets like these minerals that will be found here. So, if further increase of temperature occurs, so high temperature if further and it is suppose there is some hydrous mineral because once it is amphibole is there, so that means chances of having water is there. So, if this condition happens and further high temperature we are increasing and some of this water is inside without it is escaping, so migmatite may form. And migmatite, it is a mixed rock or it is called a hybrid rock which have both metamorphic as well as igneous material. So, these are the field photographs of the migmatite. So, these are the ways how this progressive metamorphism taking place from a subducting slab from this green cyst phases to eclogite phases and in the regional metamorphism, it is changing from green cyst to amphibolite to granulite phases and further increase of temperature, we are converting the rock into this migmatite, this is the hybrid rock system. At high pressure, low temperature and high temperature, low pressure varieties of metamorphic rocks in the context of subduction zone has been proposed that is called paired metamorphic belt because this side we have high pressure, low temperature minerals. So, the rocks which will suppose I am taking a cross section from here, I am taking a slice. So, that means you will get here the high pressure, low temperature minerals and here you will get high temperature, low pressure minerals and they are occurring side by side. So, that is why it is called paired metamorphic belt by Miyashiro and this is typically it was found in Japan arc. So, thank you very much, we will meet in the next class.